Well, hey there, buddy. Uh, this is Trent, and uh, I've, I've been doing art for a long time, so you can imagine there's a lot of ups and downs. It's a volatile kind of a lifestyle. <laughs> it, it takes uh, nerves and determination of steel, and sometimes it just seems impossible or downright hopeless. You know, when you're looking around at all these other successful artists or you're looking at the, uh, the standard to which you feel like you have to hold yourself to, and sometimes it feels like you're just losing the race and it feels like, wow, there's no way I could catch up. There's no way that I could be as good as these other people. And there's no way that I can achieve my dream. And you start telling yourself a lot of negative things. And this video is going to be about that. This video is going to be about how, how you handle that when you're feeling like you're up against the most impossible odds. And how do you, how do you get back on the horse? How do you stay focused and committed? so that you don't end up one of those statistics of people that, you know, like 99.9% .9 of people who pursue a creative career end up quitting. And, and that's, that's when they lose. That's when they, they give up on it. It's the only really determining factor, but how do you psychologically trick yourself, uh, into being committed to it? Um, one of the key things that I do is, and, and believe me, I'm, I'm not above this, man. It still happens to me. It happens. I mean, look, I'm on YouTube, man. I'm literally looking, my videos are right next to somebody else's video with probably the same title and their video might have more views than mine. And that's going to affect your psychology. It's going to affect your desire to want to get out of bed and make another video about it. Or, you know, if your artwork is on ArtStation or on Instagram, you could probably relate to this. And sometimes it feels like, well, no, I'm just as good. So what the heck is the deal? Why is my artwork not getting as much attention or, or appreciation as this other person who just has a lot of momentum behind them? And that is the key. And if you ask yourself the question, why? You, you begin to realize a lot of it does have to do with momentum. And if they've been serving their customers for a long time, it's really hard. It's really hard to start a new burger company <laughs> with McDonald's kind of owning the fast food burger market. You know what I mean? So how do you do it? How do, why would you even bother? Well, it, it starts from a place of passion for sure, but sometimes it's really hard to muster that passion because it looks, it just feels like a string of failures and our, our inner dialogue, our brain can keep talking us out of it. Just like, you know, I'm not seeing gains at the gym. So why am I going, you know, and, and it's real easy to talk yourself out of it. Um, so one of the tricks that I use is that I, I, and I'm doing this right now, quite literally, uh, <laughs> just focus on the thing right in front of you, man. This little step right in front of you, it, you know, if you're thinking about a journey and you're thinking about, Oh, I gotta, I gotta walk 10 miles. Screw that. But if you're like, I just got to walk like 20 feet, that's all that I have. That's all that's required of you to stay with this is to just walk 20 feet. That's not too big of an ask. And you might not feel that you're, you know, toppling the mountain, but that, that couple of feet, that, that couple of steps in front of you still make progress towards your end goal. And sometimes you'll find that just like investing or just like continuing to go to the gym, it, at some point you'll have those periods of time where there are exponential gains and the people who quit won't, but because you just looked at the thing that was right in front of you, uh, you will still be sticking with it. And, and sometimes that thing that's right in front of you can just be, I'm just going to do like some thumbnails for a cover, or sometimes that thing right in front of you might just be, uh, I'm just going to do some rough character studies, or I'm just going to do like a, a bicep study or, or something like that. Something small that's right in front of you that you can kind of get a little bit of a feeling of, of a completeness of, of winning. It doesn't need to, uh, you know, topple the internet. It doesn't need to impress. It doesn't have to be the greatest piece of your life. You're not making your magnum opus every single day. In fact, when you do make your magnum opus, you won't even realize that other people will realize it. It's not for you to decide. So don't think, just go. Just work on a small win right now. Just work on something that's right in front of you. If you're making an indie game, then you're frustrated with all the competition. You're frustrated that you don't have all the resources you need. You're frustrated that your vision is bigger than what you're capable of doing. Don't worry about all of that. Just focus on that little animation that you're doing today. Just focus on that one little asset that you're working on and really try to still give that all of your full attention. Don't, don't let yourself 
don't let the the chatter in your brain they call it monkey mind in in um meditation <laughs> but it's don't let the chatter in your brain talk yourself out of it because if we if we let ourselves we can easily talk ourselves out of a lot of, of our go, our own goals. We we are our worst enemy in that in that way. Um, when I when I go through this, when I'm when I'm able to pull myself out of it, I, I remember this uh, TV series. It was called The Amazing Race, and The Amazing Race was really it's, it was like 20 years ago. I think there's they still do episodes, but I think you can find it on Hulu or something. But there's this episode of The Amazing Race where. Uh, there's what it is is essentially couples or best friends like pairs of two that have a relationship decide to volunteer to uh, perform this race and it's like sometimes the race is a there's a puzzle involved you have to figure out a solution to a puzzle uh, you know kind of like that that moment in Die Hard where they have to figure out well how do you get three gallons out of exactly five you know what you only got two gallon uh, bottles there's little puzzles like that and and sometimes it's you know location based because they're traveling all over the world so they'll go to paris they'll go to england uh, london they'll go to you know places and um mostly famous places and it's really you know, quite beautiful scenery and they have to figure out like well uh, we don't have any money but we have to get a flight to this place how do we do that and uh, so there's a lot of psychology involved in this because you don't know what your competition is doing and i'm going to get to the point of this what's exciting about the show is that you really get to see how the psychology of the the people and the relationship plays into either one depending on each other for their strengths and two uh pushing through even when you don't know what your competition is doing and so there was this episode that happened where there was a boyfriend and a girlfriend and they were like it was three days out uh, towards, you know, it was like the final lap of the whole race because they have to go to multiple locations and the girl, and this isn't, it's not a judgment against her or anything. Cause we all go through this, but she just developed this very extreme negative view of where they were in the race and what their potential odds were. And she became embarrassed because she was like, oh, this is going to be so awful. We're obviously last place. We don't see anybody around us. There's nobody else uh, like for miles around. We're like in the desert, you know, and uh, and we got to get or whatever. I don't remember where it was. It was like, oh, we got to get on this boat. They're like they have to travel to multiple places. And the boyfriend just goes, you know what? Just get on the boat. and and or just get on the bike. I'll, I'll do most of the pedaling. And the whole time she's going, Oh, this is awful. My mom's going to be embarrassed for me. Like, uh, we're obviously last, you know, and, and she had told herself this whole story that she was literally dragging her feet, literally dragging her feet. And no joke, he carries her over the finish line because he didn't have this dialogue. He had tuned it out. He was just focused on the thing that was right in front of him. And he literally put her on his back and carried her over the finish line. And when they crossed the finish line, she just fell to her. She wasn't even walking. She was being carried and she still fell to her knees. And she's like, I know it's awful. We're the last place, aren't we? And the guy just looked up at both of them and said, no, actually you're first. And the look on her face they suddenly shifted, obviously huge celebratory moment, but I always think of this because there's, it's the same thing that we go through when we're in the midst of our creative endeavor. We're working on a painting and it just feels like it's not as good as other people. And so we project all of these things. It's so easy to tell ourselves the story that we're losing especially if you kind of get used to losing, if you kind of get used to not getting a lot of attention on your art, or you're not, you're kind of just used to not getting the results that you maybe wanted from yourself. And so it's easy to tell ourselves this story that we can kind of expect that. And it's a really, really um, heartbreaking thing because there's sometimes there's so much, you know, potential creativity that gets squashed because of the story that the person told themselves. And we have to find a way to really let our inner uh, child come out and play. We need to find a way to let that part of us that just wants to explore and be creative for the hell of doing it to come out and have a good time, just like frolic and, <laughs> and, and do the, the thing that, that we want to be doing without the feeling of judgment of others, without the expectation of a reward or, or a reaction from others. And sometimes that requires, especially as we get older, we get involved in this society and, and there is this sort of expectations. It's like, oh, you're not as good as this other YouTuber or you're not as good as this other artist because you don't have as many likes or views or subscribers. 
And it's so easy for us to sort of build this like kind of a point system for our value. And that value is not really real. It's it's quite quite literally an illusion that and a story that we've kind of concocted. And so you might as well concoct a story that works to your benefit if you need a story at all. Because quite literally, sometimes it's just a matter of jumping back at it and and continuing to follow through all the way to the finish line. And sometimes even if they didn't win, for instance, though, it may have been a greater win for their relationship had they they taken a different psychology. And in, in fact, I hope they're still together, this couple from The Amazing Race. <laughs> um, and I, I hope that maybe she could appreciate, you know, his psychology and maybe adopt a little bit of that in, into her own psychology when she's facing challenges because life is going to throw challenges at you, man. It, it, that's, that is life. That is our existence. And sometimes the reward that you get isn't what you expected. Um, and the next time you're facing a challenge, you're more capable. You feel more confident and more capable to handle those challenges. A great example. And I, I, I can, I want to give you a personal story. A couple of years ago, I really, I, I became very frustrated with making indie games because I just couldn't keep a team together and uh, the the financing for the project fell apart. It cost me a lot of health issues. <laughs> I don't, uh, it wasn't, I, I felt like it just wasn't worth it. So I gave up on indie games for a while. Um, but then it just, it was like a burning thing inside of me in my head. It was like, I just, I love games so much. It's just the thing I really want to make. So I sat down to just teach myself to program and I set a small goal for myself. I made a small solo indie game. It was really just kind of like a Meat Boy clone, but I was able to do something creative in that space, even though it was not the most innovative gameplay, you know, and it's a free to play game over on Steam. And I just released it. I didn't do a, a wish list. I didn't know what I was doing. I just needed to learn how do you put a game on Steam, you know, and uh, I didn't make money from it, and so I became very discouraged, and, and I felt like I just, okay, I'm just done with indie games. But the thing is, is there's that burning thing inside of me that just loves making games. And I and I wanted to take everything that I had learned and try to do something again. And, and so it, it had taken a couple of years of feeling a little burned by the whole thing to realize that, man, what I learned actually, what I got out of it wasn't financial success. And what I got out of that first solo indie game was one confidence. I, I now feel quite 100% certain that I can finish a game. I can learn anything that I need to learn to be able to finish a game. And it was, you know, it's big and scary. And of course it's intimidating as hell because there's a lot of indie games coming out all the time right now. And there's a lot of competition and, and oh man, it's really kind of insane to think that like, oh, why would anybody think, oh, other people should buy my game? <laughs> why, should, why would anybody think, oh my God, my, my stuff is so good that uh, it's going to really stand out in this marketplace. It almost takes a certain level of delusion. And I've been very good at building up a pretty strong delusion about myself over my lifetime. <laughs> uh, and, and so I, I actually think that works to your benefit if you can be a little bit delusional about, um, you know, just your confidence in your abilities and your capabilities. And sometimes I overestimate what I'm capable of, but that's always, you know, generally kind of worked out to my benefit. So be brave. Uh, even in those, uh, those times when you feel like maybe you might've lost, I wish I could have been there to remind myself, Hey, you know, maybe you gained something else. Uh, maybe what seems like, you know, you just expected these, you know, certain amount of accolades or, or appreciation. Maybe, you know, I kind of expected that people would be pretty damn impressed that I was able to do this myself. Nobody cared about that part. And so, uh, you, you kind of learn that, Hey, you know, there's, there's greater reward in the confidence that you can now sit down and program out a state machine or, or program out a very compelling enemy uh, fight or, uh, a, a, a stage that has a lot of tension in it that makes the player feel what you want the player to feel. And, and each of those things is, uh, they're, they're in some ways, I mean, more rewarding than the expectation uh, that if, if I had just made a lot of money off of it, who knows, maybe I just went away. Oh, this is too easy. I'm bored. And so sometimes that challenge can actually be really the reward in and of itself. And if you're a dark souls player, you know what I'm talking about <laughs> because sometimes those games will beat your ass. Uh, but when you do finally win when you do finally beat that boss fight it's like wow i'm amazing <laughs> you get that, like almost a gamer's ego trip you know um you can feel that sense of pride like i watched uh pewdiepie do a zero deaths run of elden ring yeah i didn't even think that was possible i thought it was a joke 
but the the kind of pride that that guy had in the moment and i know that feeling i could see it in that guy like in the moment when he actually beat it i i will never try that kind of challenge but <laughs> i'm doing it in other things i'm doing it in like you know with my art and i'm doing it with my indie game and i'm like i, I to me uh just completing a thing can feel like the reward, all the reward that I need. And um, and I certainly felt that when I published my very first comic book when I was a teenager. And I felt that when I published my first novel uh, as an adult. And I felt that when I published my first indie game. And I'm trying to tune myself to ask myself the questions of what did I learn every time I have a, even a small success, every time I put out a video and and um, and I and I feel really proud of that particular video. Or every time that I do a painting and I feel particularly proud of that painting, I try to ask myself, what was it about that that just really hit home with me? That made me feel a sense of completion. And not only that, but like, how could I make the next one better? You know, how can I make it the next workshop that I create a better workshop? How can I make the next video I make a better video? And I mean, regardless of whether or not people <laughs> accept it, it's still for me, it's constant growth. It's constant development. How can I be a more whole and complete person? And all this is going to boil down to your own values too. So always ask yourself, you know, is this in line with my long-term goals? And is this in line with my values? And if you're doing that, then you're winning, man. You're acing this. So start telling yourself that story and don't give up, regardless of who's watching, regardless of whether you get the expected results or not. Don't give up. Just ask yourself how you can make the next one better. If you appreciated this video, uh, I, I, you know what? I, I don't ask for things, but uh, I want to ask you to head on over to Steam and please wish list my game. It's called Twilight Monk. You've been watching me work on it and some of my recent videos. That really means a lot to me because it gives me a little bit of that little bit of boost of encouragement. It costs you nothing, and I certainly appreciate it. Uh, one last thing, don't forget, I'm running my big summer sale on all of my tutorials, so head on over to Gumroad and use the code on the screen if you want to get a discount. I hope that you can stick to your journey, to stick to your path, find that next little win for yourself. And uh, dudes, I want to thank you so much for stopping by, and I will see you in the next video. All right, ciao. I've said it before and I still believe it, there is a shortage of qualified concept artists to make all of these big AAA games that we play on current generation consoles. I know this because I've been a concept artist for over 20 years on some of the games that you played. I know it, I know you've played, if you haven't played them, you've seen them. And I'll tell you what, man, I'm retiring from AAA game development to make indie games, but not before I pass on all of my knowledge and experience in workshops, that's right. Being a concept artist isn't just about making pretty paintings. No, that stuff has got to be functional. And how do you learn how to make functional concept art that will get you the job? How will you improve your portfolio? Well, you could go to some art school that doesn't really teach you about game development, or you could take a mentorship with somebody that you're going to pay thousands of dollars for. And maybe even then they didn't actually work in the industry that you want to work in. They never actually shipped games before. Well, I have, I've shipped a lot of video games at very prominent companies, and I will help you to get a portfolio that will get you hired. I mean, you're going to have to do the heavy lifting, but at least I'll let you know what you got to do. Okay. And check out my testimonials and reviews to see whether or not these are for you. And I'm pretty sure that they are. If you want to be a game developer.